Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing a review of a horror film from the United States. I say United States, but it's actually a French production. So whether or not you want to call it a French horror film or an American horror film, it's up to you. But for me, I'm going to say it's an American horror film because it's spoken in English and it's shot in the United States. So English language, released in the year 2012, directed by Frank Calhoun, and this film is called Maniac. And the story to Maniac is as follows. Elijah Wood turns in a performance of a lifetime as Frank, a shy, unassuming young man with terrifying hobby. When not managing his mannequin store, Frank stalks, then scouts women. When he meets Anna, a beautiful young artist who asks for his help with her upcoming exhibition, Frank desperately tries to keep his homicidal instincts in check. But as his affections for Anna increase, so does the urge to kill. So the movie centers upon Frank, who is this very quiet, shy, unassuming young man who owns a mannequin store. So in his spare time, Frank likes to stalk women and scalp them. So he's a serial killer. And nobody else knows this. And Frank is trying really hard to keep this, um, you know, separate life under wraps so he doesn't get caught, obviously. So he's constantly fighting his demons. And the demons are becoming harder to fight when he meets Anna who is a beautiful young photographer who takes a liking to Frank's mannequins. She wants to use the mannequins in an upcoming exhibition, so she gets talking with Frank, and pretty soon the affection that Frank has for Anna is increasing. But at the same time, so is his urge to kill. So that's putting Anna in a lot of danger, and Frank is trying desperately hard not to harm this young woman. So whether or not um, you know, he does this, that's something you're going to have to find out for yourself, because that's as far as I am going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Maniac. I really, really like this film, and for me, this is a throwback to French horror films. So if you're aware of French horror, you've got Inside Martyrs, Frontiers, and High Tension. You have four films that made French horror what it is today. You basically set the standard as far as extreme horror is concerned. And this movie, you can tell that it's a French production because it has that French nastiness to it, and it also has a little bit extra in it as well. So it separates itself from the usual Hollywood horror films that are popcorn, and but this one really ri rises above that level into the world of hardcore horror fans. So that's something I really appreciated. I think that Frank Calhoun and Alexander Aja, who are both uh, involved in this film, I think that they have gone back to basics. So since their movie of High Tension, which is their French horror film, I thought they went downhill. I thought they became sellouts, which is the curse of Hollywood horror. A lot of these foreign directors who have made a name for themselves, they come over to the United States and it's all about the money. They lose their identity as filmmakers. So um, that is a great shame because more and more of these great foreign horror directors are coming over. So when Alexander Aja made a uh, Piranha 3D, they made P2 and Mirrors, they were just really watered down, they didn't have the same feeling that High Tension had, and that's something that Maniac does have, so it feels like Alexander Raja and Frank Calhoun have said, yeah, okay, those movies didn't quite work, and so we're going to go back to what we know best, and what we know is horror and that we're horror fans, and that we're going to make movies for horror fans, not just everyone, to appeal to the masses in order to rake in the cash. Now, I can understand why someone would want to sell out, because you have to make a living after all, but I just think it's a great shame, because foreign horror is so different from the American stuff, and when these foreign directors go over to the United States, they lose all of what made them good in the first place. So that is unfortunately what happened with Frank Calhoun and Alexander Raja. But they have got back on the horse with Maniac, because it has that European nastiness. Now, what I mean by that is that the violence is so hard-hitting. It's very, very graphic. So if you're not a fan of extreme horror films, do not watch Maniac. I can't stress that enough because there are some scenes that are truly horrifying. It's a very gory film, but it's just how much of a high impact the violence is. It's very, very hard-hitting. Uh, further intensified by the, the camera angles that they use. It's basically a point-of-view camera, so it feels like you're actually doing the killings, which brings a whole new level of intensity to it, and it also shows that a lot of creativity is still out there as far as directors are concerned. So Frank Calhoun and Alexander Raja have taken a big risk in shooting the movie in the way they did, but I thought it paid off. It pay dividends and it shows that you know it's not basically all just you know one trick pony as far as serial killer films are concerned. What I also loved about this movie was the way it looked. It's a very sleazy type of feeling that the movie had, but the soundtrack made it beautiful. It's a very, very powerful experience and it's something so different from your black and white serial killer films. You know, you make the serial killer as unlikable as possible, as scary as possible, and you kind of disconnect them from the human race. It's basically, they're like a monster. 
and they don't have any human quality, they don't have any relatable quality. But with this movie, Frank, the serial killer, was really interesting because he has relatable, uh, relatable qualities. He has very likable qualities. He's a very shy guy. On one hand, you feel he is very timid and he's just a really shy guy and you dismiss him as a shy guy. But then when he goes into his psychotic behavior, he becomes someone completely different. So the contrasting difference is always there and you feel that Frank's bad side is always going to come to front at any minute. So the suspense is always there, especially when he ga becomes attached to Anna who's a beautiful young woman who's completely oblivious to what he's been doing, and you feel that she's in grave danger because Frank is trying so hard to resist the urge to harm Anna. But it could happen at any minute, so you're always on edge. So there's a very psychological impact that the movie also brings, and that's something that is an added bonus. Now, all of this couldn't be possible without the performance of Elijah Wood as Frank. I thought it was an absolute knockout performance, his best performance by far, as far as I'm concerned. He played a, a really weak individual, but you feel so sad for him. Yeah, He had a really bad upbringing, but then... That sadness is countered, uh, counteracted by the ferociousness that he has when he goes on these killing sprees. So you're never quite sure what to what to feel. You know, you, you don't always feel scared of Frank. You don't always pity Frank. And there's just a lot of contrasting sort of emotions that you have in this character that make him real. That make you it make him even more terrifying because you can relate to him in some aspects of his life. And then you think to yourself, well, this guy's just gone completely crazy. He's killed all these people in the worst way possible. But what makes it scary is that Alexander Arja and Frank Calhoun have painted Frank as a real person. So that was something that blew me away. I wasn't expecting the emotional impact that this film had on me. And it was, uh, it was one hell of an experience. Now, this is based on the original. I'm not familiar with the original, so I can't compare the two, which is a plus because I feel, uh, you know, the problem with remakes is that instead of enjoying the film for what it is, you're constantly comparing it to the original you know something happens in the remake that you think you know it was a lot better than the original or the remake does something better than the original you're constantly saying yeah that was better this was worse and you're not enjoying a film for what it is so the fact that I hadn't seen the original was a plus and I think I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did if I actually saw the original so the original being a 1980s classic uh, adored by many fans I thought uh, Frank Calhoun paid homage to the original very well it has a very 80s sort of feel to it the soundtrack is very 80s very very haunting and it shows that these directors that uh, this director feels like a fan of the original so that was something um, that was very apparent in the film because it does, as I said, it feels like an 80s horror film. So that was something I really appreciated also. And so what you get in this film is just a really sad but at the same time terrifying experience. I love the fact that the mannequins symbolise what Frank was more comfortable in. And it was sad because, you know, some people are like that. They just can't connect to the outside world. So they have to retreat in their own little world in order to get by. But Frank doesn't really feel happy at any time. But when he starts talking to Anna, you feel it's a tragedy because Anna doesn't know the real Frank. And when she does, she's going to obviously, you know, go as far away as possible. And you feel that Frank is trying desperately to get some happiness, but you know it's never going to come. So on one hand, you've got a very, very gory and very violent a serial killer film, but on the other hand, you've got a tragic tale of this guy who has been brought up in the worst possible way, and he is just suffering um, day to day. So in the end, what you get is a really, really good horror film that I would highly recommend. This really surprised me, and it shows that these foreign horror directors maybe are starting to realise the error of their ways, and they're going back to what make, made them great in the first place. So overall, for Maniac, I'm going to give it four and a half stars. I loved it, and I'm sure a lot of you out there will as well. Alright guys, that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies and I'll see you later.